In my last video, I told you that after quitting my career in the Christian music industry, we sold our 4,700-square-foot dream home in Franklin, Tennessee, moved our family of four into an RV, and parked it out on 100 acres in Middle Tennessee that was so thick with eastern red cedar trees that you couldn't walk through it. After clearing trees, we built nearly a mile-long driveway so we could access our property. All of this took way longer and cost way more than we could have ever imagined. No turning back now. I parked a trailer up on the hill where I thought my front porch may someday be, and I would sit there and think about what to do next. Our plan was to take our family out of the city and build a house, a barn, grow a garden, get some pigs, cows, chickens. We were still working out house plans, but we were ready to build the barn. First, we needed some dirt to build up the site. I hired some professionals with some big machines to handle the excavating. Instead of paying to bring in dirt, I figured we could try to dig a pond. We weren't sure if it would hold in all this rock, but if my options were to pay a ton of money to bring in dirt, or pay a ton of money to dig my own dirt, with the chance that we get a pond out of it, then why not try? We also needed to get water and power up the hill to where we wanted to build our house. This property was completely undeveloped and neglected. The last man who raised a family here passed away in the 50s and he didn't have running water or power. So after we cleared all of those trees and brought in all that gravel to build a road, now we have to get utilities approximately 3,000 feet from the main road to the top of our hill. While the pros were busy digging and moving dirt, I decided I would take my recently purchased used mini excavator, save myself some money, and dig the water line myself. I also needed to clear a 40-foot wide path of trees for the power line. With some help from my son Montgomery, I got the power line cleared and approved in a couple of weeks. However, when I started the trench for the water line, I immediately pulled up a rock bigger than my truck. I sort of laughed it off and I thought, it can't be this bad the whole way. After the first day of digging, I only moved about 50 feet and never got deeper than a foot. I would go out every morning to see the pros making some progress and I would climb in the cab of my Mini X for a day of soul-crushing rock scraping. One day, Megan came down the driveway to bring me lunch, and I just started crying. It was becoming evident that this was not something I could do. Although the guys we had hired to excavate for the barn site were making progress, it was still costing way more than I had planned, and now the thought of having to hire them to do the water line as well was breaking my spirit, my will, and my wallet. With Megan's encouragement, I decided to keep at it in my little excavator and let the pros and their money-sucking machines head on to zap someone else of their life savings. There was still a lot of work to be done before we would have a barn to even hook water up to, so I had time. Once our build site was ready, we were able to take delivery of our barn materials. The folks we had hired to build the barn shell showed up and got started right away. The hill we were building on was so crowded with cedar trees when we bought it that it was difficult to even walk around up here. But now that the trees were all cleared and the barn was going up, we were able to enjoy our first sunsets from the future porch site on our flatbed trailer. The barn materials showed up on January 6th. The final touches went on the shell two months later to the day. In all this time, I was still working on our water line. If I ever buy another piece of property, I will show up with a shovel. And if I can't dig multiple holes at least four foot deep, I will not buy it. The purchase of this property is the result of a guy who has no idea what he's doing. Once the barn shell was up, we were excited to finally get power. After jumping through multiple hoops and being pushed around quite a bit by some power-loving authorities, pun intended, we finally got approval and on the list for power poles. I took a break from my miserable attempt at digging a water line and went to work on digging a four foot deep trench from the last pole to where our barn's meter would go. Luckily, most of this was in the fill dirt that had been brought up to our build site, so I was actually able to get it done. When the power company showed up, they did not take my advice to stay on the gravel and ended up getting stuck. Not only did they drive off the gravel drive, but they drove over the trash pile from the barn construction and broke a brake line in the truck. This led to another week delay before they could get a mechanic out to fix the truck and before it could dry up enough for us to get back to work on the pole. 
Another week after that, and the electrician was able to come back out and shine a little light at the end of another long, dark tunnel. We had power. I went back to the losing battle of the water line. I rented another machine, and with the help of my son Montgomery and my friend Stephen, we took yet another swing at it. No one wanted to tell me what I already knew. I don't consider myself a quitter, folks, but I quit. I found a guy on Craigslist, and I asked him if he wanted to be my hero. I had worked on digging parts of a 3,000-foot trench for months. Some places I was able to get down a couple of feet, and some places I was only able to get down a few inches. This guy showed up and advised that it would be better on his machine and quicker if he didn't use any of my trench and just blazed his own trail. So all of my work was for nothing. But at this point, I just wanted it done. So while he got started cutting a path through the section of earth that inspired the song Rocky Top Tennessee, I went to purchase 3,000 feet of 2-inch PVC. With the help of my friends Chris, Jeffrey, and my friend Steven, who was showing up nearly every day by this point to lend me a hand, we started laying our water line. There were huge sections of this trench that were in solid rock over two feet deep and went on for hundreds and hundreds of yards, as if someone had poured acres and acres of concrete and scattered some dirt on top. It was painfully clear that I never stood a chance against it with my mini eggs. We were finally making progress, but it wasn't like it was a walk in the park for this guy's monster machine either. He underestimated the extent of the rock as well. It took him about four weeks of loud, nonstop, rock, dust-covered work. By the end of each day, he looked like he had been beat up and doused in baby powder by means of torture. His machine even broke down under the stress of the job, and we had to wait several days for parts to be delivered so he could fix it. He went through buckets and buckets of carbide teeth as the enormous wheel chewed its way into the ground that no man had dared to tame in nearly two generations until the dreamer that is me came along and decided, let's do this. When it was time to finally connect the water line from the meter at the main road to our hydrant at the barn 3,000 feet away, my friend Stephen went down to the meter to turn the key so that I could stand at the end of the pipeline to relish in the fruits of our labor. Starting to hit, there it goes. We got water. Now that we had water and power, we moved the RV up the hill and parked it in front of our barn. We set up some lawn furniture inside and had the coolest bonus room ever. I'm videoing you. kids had the biggest pool of anyone we knew and the smallest i'm being honest when i say that we really were enjoying living in the rv everyone always asked how are you doing that they assumed we were miserable in such a tight space after living in such a big beautiful home but we weren't miserable we loved it now when we sold our house to move out here we were in talks with a builder we had designed a new house and we're just tweaking some things and ironing out details before we got started We were building the barn shell to give us a place to store materials out of the weather and keep appliances, furniture, and other things safe during construction of our home. Our guess was that we would be living in the RV for about six months and then be moving into our new farmhouse. But like every other plan we had, this one got turned on its head as well. Just before we got the green light to start building our house, the world shut down over something called COVID. The stock market was crashing. The grocery store shelves were empty. The world was scared. We all thought it was best to hit pause on building our house and let all this blow over. Who could have guessed that more money was about to be printed and entered into circulation over the next few weeks than had existed in circulation up to that point? Who could have guessed that the price of building materials were about to go to all-time highs? The house we had sold in Franklin had nearly doubled in price as people from other parts of the country moved to the more relaxed restrictions of Middle Tennessee, our money was worth half of what it was just a few months earlier. The budget we had in mind for our new house was no longer going to cut it. Our plans were going up in flames. Oh, and somewhere in the 3,000 feet between my barn and our water meter, I had a leak. 
You know, the Bible says something about never start a project without counting the cost, unless you get started and you can't finish and everybody call you a fool. But what do you do when the cost changes overnight? But we were in this. We were together. It still felt like we were building something that was worth building. So we settled into our life in the RV and made new plans. I'll share that with you next time. Um... <laughs>